Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God Dungeon Guide video. Last time we took a look at the Undead Lair, and I originally had plans to make the Abyss of Demons Dungeon Guide, but I completely forgot about the Sprite World, which is a fantastic beginner-friendly dungeon. And I recommend that you all give it a shot if you want to get your bearings on the game. For most people, the Sprite World is a very simple dungeon, and it is. It's, it's very easy once you are familiar with it and once you have max defense, definitely. But for a straight-up new player, Someone who has never done a dungeon before, other than Pirate Cave, Spider Den, you know. This is going to be your best source of income, as in your best source of potions, experience, all that jazz. Sprite worlds can be located in Godlands by killing the sprite children of a sprite god. Now what's really cool is how there's multiple sprite children per sprite god. Now usually whenever you're dungeon farming, you kill the god, see if he drops the portal, and if not, you try to go find another god. With the sprite god, you have multiple chances of getting the portal in one sitting. And if you just wait a little bit, the sprite god will actually spawn more children as you wait. So if you don't feel like going out and finding another sprite god, you can just sit there and wait. Upon entering the sprite world, you're going to notice that it has a very psychedelic atmosphere to it, with a lot of bright and popping colors, giving you the impression that you're in a galaxy far, far away, or in another dimension. It's kind of funny because when I first saw this, I actually thought you could fall out of the dungeon if you went off the edge, and it's silly to think of that now because Realm is not a platformer, that's for sure. But at the time, that was a major concern for me. There are also a lot of colorful trees plastered around the area. You can destroy them if they're obstructing your path, but you can also use them as a shield to protect you from enemy fire. And lastly, there are these conveyor belt-esque platforms that move in one direction. They're really just there to keep things moving and to mess with your brain if you're trying to attack an enemy while simultaneously maneuvering yourself. But what I think is truly unique about the sprite world that separates it from all other dungeons is how open it is. There are no walls in the entire dungeon, making it feel a lot more spacious and less like a labyrinth. This allows characters like the trickster or the rogue using a plane walker to quickly tell teleport across platforms and get to the boss room much quicker. But for the rest of us, even though we can't teleport, it's still not very difficult navigating yourself through here. It's a very straightforward dungeon, and you shouldn't be finding yourself getting lost, although there are plenty of dead ends still. As for the enemies, there are only two different types that you'll encounter. These little sprites and native sprite gods. There are five different sprites in total. Fire, ice, magic, darkness, and nature. Color coded accordingly to help you differentiate them. Now despite there being five different types, they're all very similar to one another with subtle differences here and there. Like some of the sprites having five shots instead of two, having a longer range, having faster fire rate. But all those little details are so trivial because you know what? You're just gonna kill them in two seconds anyway. They have low HP, they don't do a lot of damage, they're nothing. The only one that should give you any trouble is the native ice sprite because it slows you for 1.4 seconds. And that's not good because it's slow, no. The only enemy that I can guarantee will give you trouble is the native sprite god. No duh. The only difference between the sprite god here and the one in the realm is that this one doesn't spawn any children. For obvious reasons. But the big reason that we all love the sprite gods inside the dungeon better than outside is because these guys drop attack potions much more frequently. And out of the six main stats, I'd say attack is probably the hardest to get, so take advantage of any opportunity that you can to get some. My only recommendation is that you kill the other sprites before taking on the big one, because the sprite god does shoot pretty quickly, so if you were to get slowed by accident, that wouldn't be very good. Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward from there. You just navigate through the dungeon until you finally happen upon the boss room, where you will be greeted by Lamon the Sprite God, who's actually a she, so it should be goddess, but I'll let it slide. Then again, the Realm Sprite God reproduces children, so that should be a goddess too. Yeah, I don't care. Lamone has two phases. She's got her first phase where she just whoa, just zips all around the room super lightning fast. This entire portion of the fight is based on how well and how quickly you can react. And since her movements are entirely based on your own, there's no definite method that I can tell you guys to take. Just be quick, and if it's too much for you to handle, back out. She'll stop eventually. It's after this when Lamone will go into her infamous elemental phase. I mean, you don't have to call it that if you don't want. I just, I thought it was good because it was, I just thought it was clever. Lamone will plant herself in the ground and remain stationary for the remainder of the phase. She'll then spawn elements to the four corners around her and you. Once they land, they'll start firing their own elements in a square shape. Since these bullets are constantly being fired, you don't want to get caught by them. 
It's not good. Now, there are two ways that you can go about this fight, and this is pretty cool. Mid-ranged and low-ranged characters have only one way of doing this. Getting up close and personal, and periodically dodging Lamone's shots, which, I'll be real with you, isn't very hard to do initially. But if you can't handle the stress and tension of being that up close to her, you can grab a staff class or a wand class, anybody with really long range, and stand back far enough to where you're out of Lamone's vision. But if you're playing off-center, you can actually see Lamone out of the corner of your screen. And you can actually reach her with your long range, effectively damaging her during the entire phase without her even seeing you. The only thing is that you won't be able to see the damage that she's taking, so if you have an ability like a spell bomb, it's gonna be pretty hard to predict when she's vulnerable, so you just kinda gotta spam and hope for the best. Or if you know her pattern well enough, you can just do it, cause you're, you're good. And after that, she goes back into her phase, and Latherin's repeat until she's dead. If you get full soulbound loot, Lamone will always drop a dexterity potion, but there's also a chance that you can get a defense potion. There's also some lower tier items that Lamone can drop, so if you're a new player, which you probably are if you're watching this video, these items will be of interest to you. But if the stars are in perfect alignment and you somehow manage to get a white bag, you can get one of two things. The Staff of Extreme Prejudice, which is pretty fun to use, just not very practical, and the Cloak of the Planewalker, which ironically is very useful for clearing the dungeon in question. <laughs> but other than that, there's not really much else that goes into doing a sprite world. I'm sure I overlooked some minor details, but you guys got the gist of it, and hopefully I was able to help out in some way. So, with that being said, Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. The next Dungeon Guide video on my list is definitely going to be The Abyss of Demons, so stay tuned for that. Alright. See ya.